welcome to one of, if not the most iconic race circuit in Formula 2. A track with absolutely no room for error, a track that requires every bit of skill these young drivers can muster. We're getting ready for lights out here in Monte Carlo. The circuit de Monaco is, for all practical purposes, pretty much unchanged since its 1929 introduction. It's strange to consider, but this 2.1 mile lap will take the drivers here around almost an entire country. 19 corners, but not that many opportunities for overtaking. Instead, this is a track that rewards technical skill. I'm Alex Jakes, and I'm joined once again by the GP2 champion, Davide Valsecchi. Davide, today's race takes place on one of the most infamous street circuits in motorsports. What is it about this track that makes it stand out? Alex, I'm very happy to be here. Monaco is a short track, but the wall is just after the white line. The drivers need to stay aware from the line and from the wall. And it's so important to start in the first two row if you want to compete for the victory. Cap. Let's take a look at the grid positions for today's race. Marcus Armstrong lines up on pole position, and starting alongside is Sean Galeo. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Tictum, Joe, Yuki Sonoda, and Eilot, Deruvela, Ace, Schwartzman, Louis Delatraz, Schumacher, Samaya, Pedro Pique, and Alesi, Aitkin, Matsushita, Dragovic, and Marino Sato. Nisani, Markolo, Mazepin, and Luca Giotto rounds off the grid. Now it's almost time to lights out, so let's go down to the track. Alright, here we are in Monaco for the feature race. Um, we're starting P8 because for some reason at Formula 2 career mode, my driver mode is still broken. It, yeah, I don't know why it's so broken, so... Anyways, here we go. Firebirds are now coming on at Monte Carlo for a famous race. It's a lights out, and away we go. And that's how... Alright, we didn't get damaged, that's fine. Well, nice shot there. Understood, copy that. Here we are on lap 3 behind Guan Yu Zhou. Um, obviously, he is going to be on the F1 team for Renault and watch this very bad overtake. Yep, we absolutely descend it. We hit him. We surprisingly don't take damage, which is a good thing, but obviously, that was not the cleanest overtake. That was not a nice overtake. That was one of the worst overtakes, I guess not. Well, yeah, the worst overtake I've done so far. Not the best. And as you can see, I hit him and you know, he stopped. I don't know why he stopped. Here we are on lap 6 of the Monaco Grand Prix. We are behind Sonoda, who is in P4. But here we go down the inside, lunging down the inside like we did with Guan Yu Zhou. We made contact again. I guess during this, I was being way too aggressive. But it makes sense why I'm aggressive. This is Monaco, you got like no chance to overtake. Sorry, Yuki, but that's 
Lap 7, here you are, going down the main trade check, giving us a horrible uh, request to change the strategy. If you try to go down the side, it doesn't work. You are now just pumped in behind and switch from generator to overtake on this next part, possibly. If you go down the inside, we squeeze it a bit wide, and we make it clean through. That was probably the cleanest overtake so far. And that's a lot from in terms of improvement on overtake. Here we are on lap 9, we are much closer to that victim now with DRS going down the main street. We are getting closer and closer and closer. Ahead, but be Looks aware like that we go down the inside, we turn the the race. don't get a warning, no contact, which is a good thing. We don't hit. I don't hit anybody, so that's a good thing. We are currently now up into P2, which is a good, very, very impressive feat, especially out of Monaco. We are going down the inside, uh, it doesn't work out so far, here we are, like, okay, once again, some breathing on board, space between you and the on lap 11, the final lap, and lap. here you go down the inside, and it looks like it works, but here comes Armstrong, fighting back, trying to get back to the game, back to position, we run him a bit wide, we stay ahead, and that should be it for the rest, if we keep a cool head, and bring this, uh, bring this home. Obviously, I'm going to be a bit aggressive, obviously, we did just take the lead from them. You obviously want that back, which obviously makes sense. For now, that we should be fine. Looks like we almost made a one second gap to Armstrong. It looks like we will be set to win the Monaco Grand Prix, the future race of the Monaco Grand Prix, obviously. Sprinters after this, so we'll see how the sprint race goes. But here you are seeing a great drive from me, um, all the way down and not the place I wanted to be. But obviously working my three way through, not doing not doing the best overtakes of the run wide. But of course I was a bit too aggressive, but that is all good now because we are about to cross the checkered flag and we are gonna see it. And we win the Monaco Grand Prix. You worked hard for that one. Congratulations. Yeah, that was shiz. Congratulations. That was insane. Brilliant stuff from ART today. What a superb victory. Davide, what do you think made the difference here? What a race, Alex. Every so often we get a spectacular like we did today. Less focus on strategy and time management, and more on just pushing it to the limits and battling it out for those top positions. I think what we experienced today is evidence of why Formula 2 is continuing to draw into crowds. And expect today's race will definitely be turning a few more heads to the series. An amazing race today, and a very well-deserved one too. The team worked very hard to get exactly the right setup out of the F2 car. It works for them, and the results speak for themselves. ARTGP winners today. All right, that's so a good. Then, it's time to see how this result affects the drivers' yeah. championship. Ace increases their championship lead. Now then, Davide Valsecchi, who would you say was your driver of the day? For me, the RT driver was the best in the field today. They fought so hard and had the incredible pace at times. So I don't think anyone did a better job today. And now a look at the team standings. ART have extended their lead over the championship. Meanwhile, good work from Campos this weekend, who pushed themselves further up the order. After all this drama, you'll be mad not to join us for the next race. We hope to see you then. Take care. Alright, that is a 1-2 finish for ART. Next race will be the sprint race. I'll see you then. Welcome back for the final event of the weekend, the sprint race. 
Here, the top eight from yesterday's feature race are reversed to make up the grid below us. And in just a few minutes, those drivers will be hurtling it down. It better be reversed. I'm joined by a man who's had many a wet race, Davide Valsecchi. Just how challenging will these conditions be out there on track? Delighted to be here, Alex. Even in this weather, nothing will be easy for them. We may have standing water, which means visibility will be a worry. They just need to stay clear of the white lines and curbs. They can cause you a real problem when it's so slippery. It's not even reversed. What is this? This is broken. Anyways, uh... Ladies and gentlemen, here we are. Sprint race, Monaco. Light, here we go, lights out. And away we go. That was such a slow start from everybody. As they get sandwiched in between. Looks like no damage though. We close our teammate. Yuki Tsunoda, Yuki Tsunoda in the uh, Carlin ahead is quite fast. I'm not good at Monaco in the wet. I'm only good at um, dry apparently. Look at how far Yuki Tsunoda is. 1.7 seconds. And we almost hit the barrier. That was a very, very close call. Not the best thing if I hit the barrier. That's not really fun. Anyways, here we are in the tunnel section. After this turn right here, we have a two second gap to our teammate. This means that we are set on to get into an opportunity. But that should be it for this and we ran wide almost clipping the barriers there I was happy to do this back and now you can see 7 seconds ahead our teammate and we take damage that is not the best news but it is the final lap we are in sector 3 yeah we are in sector 3 yeah, now we are in sector 3 uh, but we should be fine no there's a glitch there anyways we are set on winning not winning, uh, getting second, and we almost hit the left front wing there. And it's, that is it for the Monaco Grand Prix, and we finish. Well done, good finish. You stepped up and achieved what we asked. Good job. Magnificent race and a drive right out of the top draw to take the win for Carlin today. Tell me, Davide, what was the key to this success? Simple, they are just a better driver in the world. Here in Formula 2, we know the car are the same, so it's not down to machinery. They can just handle the weather better than everyone else. I mean, they can have the throttle open longer, 
As we can see, it's time for the podium. And I can see the Carlin team underneath our commentary box going crazy as their driver walks out. It was a great win, and it means a great deal to this team. And now, let's take a look at the driver's stand. The gap at the top of the championship has been cut down after a difficult race for our championship leader. And so, driver of the day then, Davide Belsecchi, who do you think you'd go for? For me, the RT driver was the best in the field today. That was a commanding performance today. Very impressive indeed. On to the teams then. ART have extended their lead over the championship. It was great having you with us for this weekend. I hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. We'll see you when Formula 2 returns. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, that was the uh, round 3 of the Formula 2 season. Next up, we are in Baku, it looks like. Anyways, that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed. This is Gaming Sign Off. I'll see you in a brand new video. Peace.